2008, he published the Beat Handbook, 100 Days of Kerouaxians. Uh, he's become a familiar name in the Kerouac world, thanks uh, to that, both that book and his wonderful blog, which I encourage you to go see on the internet, called The Daily Beat. And every day he's got something new up there. Uh, almost every day. Almost every day. It features nearly 1,000 posts on topics ranging from six degrees of Kerouac to items about Kerouac and the news. The Daily Beat has published interviews with Beat notables such as Al Hinkle, Helen Weaver, and myself. Um, he's a frequent attendee at the annual Lowell Celebrates Kerouac in Jack's Massachusetts hometown. And four years ago, he began an annual ritual of filming a reading at Kerouac's grave and posting the videos on YouTube. Uh, he's a frequent contributor to Kerouac scholar Dave Moore's invitation-only Kerouac group on Facebook. And uh, in the spring of this year, 2013, Rick will teach a Kerouac course at the University of Maine, where he teaches at Farmington, uh, where he's an associate professor of special education and chair of the Division of Rehabilitation Services and Special Education. So please welcome, I'm sorry, Rick Dale. Thank you, Jerry. Thanks for being here. It's great to see so many faces. Um, I, I think I'm a little bit like Jack and to the extent that Anticipating this event was a bit daunting when I knew who I was going to be on stage with. And for about two seconds, I thought the best thing I could do was get a big jug of wine and, and sit on the edge of the stage and yell, go, 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 and let, let that be my contribution. Um, but I, I settled for uh, wearing one of Jack's you know, trademark flannel shirts instead. Um, I, I really struggled with what to say that hasn't already been said. So. Uh, I took some advice from Jerry, and I'm going to just tell a quick couple little stories about my own experience. Um, I think I'm going last on the panel because I have probably the... the came to the, I came to Kerouac the, the, the last, and it's, it's interesting. And I, actually, this was something that kind of struck me as I was listening to the other panelists. Um, you don't have to be 19 years old and, and have your dog-eared copy of On the Road in your backpack to have your life changed by Jack Kerouac. Uh, my life is a lot different today than it would have been, and it's not that long ago. It was in probably 2004-ish when I even first ever heard of Jack Kerouac. And I had a good high school education. Um, <laughs> I thought I did. So I was, you know, I was about 47 or something like that when I first even heard of Jack Kerouac, and I'm, that's only 10 years ago or so. Um, but just for some fun, and I did this um, last month, um, and I made sure I wasn't violating any research protocols in doing so, but I, I wanted to find out what some of the younger generation know about Jack Kerouac. So I just at ran, totally at random, without violating any confidentiality, um, asked a few people from the younger generation that I ran into in my travels on the background campus and in Maine. Um, have you ever heard of Jack Kerouac? I asked five people that I would consider younger generation, you know, 30 and, and, and down into their 20s. Um, I asked two female college students of about traditional age, so probably, you know, 18, 19, 20 years old. They hadn't heard of him. I asked two different bartenders. <laughs> not for any particular reason other than not, I was in a bar. <laughs> this was in different bars. They were both female. One was about 30, one was about 25. The older of the two had heard of him enough to say, he was a writer, wasn't he? <laughs> I said, yes. Have you ever heard of On the Road? No. The younger of the two had heard the name Kerouac, didn't know why. The one person I asked who knew a little bit was a non-traditional, I'd say 30-something, male, college student, special education major, one of my students. And I said, have you ever heard of Jack Kerouac? And he said, he was a writer. And then he said, laughingly, his grammar was even worse than mine. <laughs> <laughs> and he knew that Kerouac wrote about his travels around the country, but he, he didn't have any real depth or profound knowledge, but he knew the most of the five people that I asked. Um, how, now the teacher in me is gonna come out. How many of you heard of Jack Kerouac in your high school education. Wow. Now, keep your hands up. How many of you that, are, that have your hand up 
had a West Coast education. Yeah, it's about the same, the, the hands pretty much stayed up. So maybe it's an East Coast, West Coast. But I, I feel like I got ripped off in high school because you know, why couldn't I have been exposed to this great stuff? Um, you know, many of you probably haven't had a chance if you're from the West Coast to, to visit Lowell. Uh, how many of you have been to Lowell? Wow, quite a few. How many of you have been to Lowell Celebrates Kerouac? <coughs> Big Sur? Yeah, I go through there. If you get a chance, go to Lowell in October during Lowell Celebrates Kerouac. It is, if you're a Jack Kerouac fan or a Beat Generation fan, it is a fantastic event. There are readings, there are events, there are uh, pub crawls, it's just a fantastic thing. Um, but, the, but the most sacred and holy thing that you can do if you go to Lowell is to go out to the grave, and I, you have to do it. And I can't really explain it, but here's a quick little story, and then I'll, I'll try to wrap up. Um, in 05, which was only maybe a year into my Kerouac obsession, basically, which really started because of my own Neil Cassidy, which is a story for a whole nother day, but it's pretty interesting that I got turned on to Jack Kerouac because I met this younger man who I just shambled after like a dingle doody, and he turned me on to Jack Kerouac. But in 05, I, I went to Lowell. I was on my way to visit Crystal up in Maine, which is where I live now, from Pennsylvania, where I lived at the time. His grave is a very nondescript grave. It's just a flat gravestone. Um, there aren't any real markings to, to direct you there, so you have to do a little studying ahead of time when you get there to find it. So I'm driving down uh, Lincoln and 7th, I think, are the two streets that it's, a, that it's an intersection of. And I saw a couple standing alongside of, a, as I said, a nondescript flat gravestone. And I walked over and I, I found out, yep, indeed, that was Jack's grave. This couple was there on their honeymoon. <laughs> yeah, because the, the man of the couple, the young man, was writing a book, Jack Kerouac was his inspiration, and he vowed, and told me this vow, that when he finished this book he was writing, he was going to leave a copy on the grave. And I thought, I've been wanting to write a book. I think it needs to be about Jack Kerouac, and I'm gonna do it, and I'm gonna leave a copy on the grave. Now, the reason I'm sitting, you know, Jack was a man of action. I don't know if that, if that comes through as much as it needs to sometimes, but he, he, you know, when in doubt, he did something. It might not have always been the best thing in the world to do, but he did something. So, I'm sitting here with this auspicious panel, um, because of that visit to Jack's grave and that idea of leaving a book on the grave, because I started going to Lowell Celebrates Kerouac and every year I leave my book on the grave. I leave it in a baggie sealed up because it might rain and I write, <laughs> steal this book. You know, so. The book I left in 2008 showed up back in Lowell in 2009 because a Notre Dame University student had been there in 2008. He took my book off the grave and then brought it back to Lowell to give it to somebody else in 2009. I'm not sure what happened to the one I left in, in 2009. I didn't go to Lowell Celebrates Care Act in 2010. The copy I left in 2011 was picked up by this guy who I never thought I'd meet or know because I was in awe of. Jerry Nicosia. <laughs> so he stole a book. He stole a book off of Jack Kerouac's grave. But I think it said steal this book, right? <laughs> so we struck up this fast friendship. He, he sent me an email. I have, you know, I have to tell you a story. I picked up this book, et cetera. So we actually write letters back and forth, handwritten letters, handwritten postcards, just like Jack and, and, and the guys used to do back in the day. And so, I guess, I guess the moral of the story is, Jack changes people. He changes people's lives, and there are really kind of these mystical, cosmic connections that start happening when, when you follow your heart, really, is what it's all about. It's, it's the message, and, and Peter was talking about authenticity. And, and uh, I'll stop there. I could go on and on. Thank you.